What do you know about the many artifacts of Tamriel? Maybe you've invaded a common goblin cavern and discovered a shiny staff with unimaginable power. Maybe a sword with a distinct purple glow has been passed down by your forebears for generations. Maybe you're a scholar like myself and just want to know as much as possible. Hopefully the artifact you are looking for will be included in this video. This will be the complete history of every artifact found across Nirn according to the book Tamrielic Lore. By Yagram Begarn, the last known living Dwemer. We will also be looking at several prolific pieces that were never covered in this novel. So stick around for some of the most obscure and rare artifacts and every piece of knowledge that we know about them. Bagarn's collection of notes is no longer sufficient in the fourth era, as many of these artifacts have made an appearance in the following years since its publishing. And so I will be providing supplementary information about what I can from their origins to where they are now. It is important to note that many of these artifacts were once given to the Museum of Artifacts in Mournhold by my sweet moon and star, Nerevar reincarnated. Following the Red Year in Morrowind, a stinky Argonian invasion was launched through the mainland, and Mournhold was hit bad. It is therefore apparent that many of these pieces of great power have either disappeared completely unsurfaced as of yet, or they are stuck in the huts of some dirty farm tool in a swamp. Let us begin by reading Bagarn's foreword in his book. The following are notes gathered over the past centuries of items of unimaginable significance. All have been seen, owned, and lost again and again throughout Tamriel. Some may be myth, others may be hoax, but regardless, many have lost their lives attempting to find or protect these very coveted items. Boots of the Apostle. The Boots of the Apostle are a true mystery. The wearer of the boots is rumors to be able to levitate, though nobody has ever seen them used. These boots have only been seen twice in the history of Tamriel. Tarasa Aram, the curator of the Museum of Artifacts in Morrowind, describes them as having been worn by Tiber Septim during the Second Era, receiving them from as a gift from the Greybeards at High Hrothgar. These boots were kept in the stronghold of Berandas in western Vodenfell, under watch by a group of Dunmer. Eventually, Berandas would be overrun by a group of Azura's Daedric minions, and the boots remained on one of the fallen guard's corpses until the Nerevarine would arrive and claim them as his own. Interestingly enough, a woman named Anna Ming would be found at the site of the boots of the Apostle. This woman turned out to be an apparition of the Divine Mara. Her appearance suggests that Mara guided the Nerevarine here in order for the boots to be recovered. The Nerevarine would give this up to the Museum of Artifacts, and thusly its current fate is unknown. There may be some dirty, dusty farm tool out there flying high in the skies of Black Marsh wearing these bad boys. Bow of Shadows. Legend has it that the Bow of Shadows was forged by the by the Daedra Nocturnal. The legendary ranger, Rareless Beal, was granted the Beal for a secret mission that failed, and the Bow was lost. Rarlas did not go down without a hearty fight and is said to have, with the aid of the Bo'u, taken scores of his foes with him. The Bo'u grants the user the ability of invisibility and increased speed. Many sightings of the Bo'u of Shadows have been reported, and it is even said that the sinister Dark Elf Assassin of the Second Era, Dram, once wielded this bow. This book is the only known source of information on Ron Rarlas Gio. The second known wielder of the Bowie Dram has a little more recorded history. Dram is an interesting character with interesting history. He seemingly has had many reincarnations over the years, with his most recent being in Second Era 800, after an execution by the Tribunal. Dram would join the Morag Tong, and eventually find himself in the court of Tiber Septim himself, serving as an assassin. It is unknown when he obtained the Bureau of Shadows but he would use it to kill the Crown Prince Artor of Hammerfell during the Battle of Hunding Bay, securing victory for the Imperials. In Second Era 864, Dram would be killed by the legendary mercenary, Cyrus the Restless, and the Boo would go unrecorded for many years. The next appearance of the Bao would be in Third Era 427, in the hands of Goris the Maggot King of Morrowind. Goris was a Dunmer necromancer who desecrated and defiled the Venom ancestral tomb in eastern Vardenfell. It is unknown how he achieved possession of the Bio, but the Nerevarine slayed him and took the artifact back to the museum. Following the sack of Mournhold, the bow would find itself in the hands of an assassin in 4th era 201, 
in central Skara. The assassin would attempt to use the bow to kill Yar Balgruf of Whiterun. However, his plot was foiled by the last dragonborn and the artifact would fall into their hands. Again, it is unknown how the bow of shadows would end up in the hands of this assassin. But at least we know where it currently resides. Chrysamir. The Paladin's Blade is an ancient claymore with offensive capabilities surpassed only by its own defenses. It lends the wielder health, protects him or her from fire, and reflects any spells cast against the wielder back to the caster. Seldom has Chrysamir been wielded by any bladesman for any length of time, for it chooses not to favor one champion. Chrysamir is a very storied artifact in Tamriel, finding itself in the possession of a handful of heroes throughout the ages. It was first forged by Shpiastri Biddle long ago in the Mirethic era. It appears to have been crafted according to a combination of both man and mirror forging techniques, and seemingly gains enchantments as it is passed from hand to hand. The Dairendi clan would use this blade to establish their hegemony over the Lords of High Rock, and also to secure victory over the Alessian Empire at the Battle of Glenumbria Moors. It would also find itself present during the first sack of Orsinium, and the Siege of Rivenspire by an army of giants. All of this occurred during the First Era and under Dereni ownership, but the blade would go unmentioned until Third Era 389, where the Eternal Champion would find and claim it after searching a dungeon. It would surface again 16 years later around the Iliot Bay, where the agent would acquire the blade. There are several conflicting accounts about the specifics of his acquisition. Some records indicate that the hero would receive this sword after stealing it from a local mages' guild. Other sources indicate that the king of Orsinium, Gorto Gronagorm, would exchange the sword for the totem of Tiber Septim. A third record indicates that the agent was a part of a local knightly order, and received the sword as a reward for eradicating a lich. It is unknown which of these accounts is the true one, and the warp in the west may be responsible for all of them being true. The only thing we know is following the warp. The agent held ownership over Chrysamir. The blade would then go undocumented until the Nerevarine finds it in the Third Era. It would first be found in the hands of the sorcerer, Draramu Hloran, in the cave of Abanababi in Azura's coast. It is unknown how this individual came into the possession of Chrysamir, but the Nerevarine would kill her and claim the blade, giving it up later to the Museum of Artifacts. Following the sack of the museum, the artifact would next be found in the possession of a ghostly spirit known as the Lost Paladin in Skyrim. The last dragonborn would slay the Lost Paladin atop Farlho southeast of Riftum, and claim the artifact of their own, Cure S of the Savior's Hide. Another of Hercene's artifacts was the Cure S of the Savior's Hide. The Cure S has the special ability to resist magicka. Legend has it that Hercene awarded his peeled hide to the first, and only mortal to have ever escaped his hunting grounds. This unknown mortal had the hide tailored into this magical cure S for his future adventures. The Savior's hide has a tendency to travel from hero to hero, as though it has a mind of its own. There is another book that offers a competing origin to the Savior's hide. It is called Harvest's End, and describes the armor being crafted by Malakath rather than Hersi. The Savior's hide would find itself in the possession of Chimir Grajan, a sorcerer in employ of the Dairani clan. According to his own notes, Kamira used the hide to protect himself from the magic of Nerun's Dagon, after tricking him into casting himself into oblivion. Chimir's trick would backfire, as although he remained physically unharmed and immortal, Mirun's Dagon would abuse Chimir's own spell and cast his hometown and island to oblivion, destroying everything the man cared about, and forcing him into an infinite life of torment and regret. Chimir subsequently split up the armor and hid the pieces across the island. Centuries later, during Dagon's invasion of the Battle Spire in Third Era 389, the Savior's hide would be reassembled. An unnamed apprentice would reach Chimir's island in oblivion, where he would receive help from Chimir himself in finding all the pieces. This apprentice would then use the hide to help defeat Mirun's Dagon and save the Battle Spire. Years later, the Savior's Hide would find itself in the possession of an artifact collector named Devaith Fior in Morrowind. The Nera Varine would steal the artifact of Devaith Fior and give it to the Museum of Artifacts instead. The artifact itself was likely never looted during the Argonian Sack of Mournhold, 
as it appears to have been reclaimed by Hersin before that point in history. Hersin proceeded to offer the Savior's High to the hero of Kach in Third Era 433 after ordering them to kill the last unicorn in Cyrodiil. The artifact then goes unrecorded until Fourth Era 176, where the Hyde is found in the hands of bandit Queen Maritashusti, who was killed by a group of blades in Skyrim. Four years later in Fourth Era 180, the Hyde is once again found locked away in a hidden chest, found by a different group of blades. If you've never heard of these two instances of the Savior's Hyde, it's because they come from a board game and a mobile game, so nobody blames you. It is likely that all of these instances are cured as the result of Hersene reclaiming the artifacts and gifting them to various groups of bandits for whatever reason. The Savior's Hyde is once again found in the Fourth Era, this time by the last Dragonborn. They received this artifact after skinning a werewolf named Seinling. Sending reportedly stole Hersene's ring for use of its ability to control werewolf transformation. Hersene, not liking that at all, tasks the last dragonborn with the killing and skinning of sending in exchange for the hide during a great hunt at Bloated Man's Grotto. This is the last time the Savior's hide has been seen up to fourth era 201. Daedric Scourge The Daedric Scourge is a mighty mace forged from sacred ebony in the fires of Ficklodire. The legendary weapon of Makan, it was once a fierce weapon used to send spirits of darkness back into oblivion. The weapon has the ability to summon creatures from oblivion. As told in the Book of Daedra, this weapon was dedicated by Malakath for use by mortals and has forbidden any Daedric spirit from using the mace. The creatures it can summon are said to be previous victims of the mace. Makan is the first person to be known to wield Scourge and is said to have used it to slay countless minions of Mirun's Dagon. It is unknown when Makan lived or who he was. But the mace eventually fell into the hands of Tiber Septim's Imperial Legion, where it stayed in the armory of the Battle Spire until Mirun's Dagon attempted to invade it. An unnamed apprentice of the Battle Spire would find Scourge in the Kaitif section and use it to help defeat the Daedric Prince. Interestingly, a Daedric entity named One Shalakirian would attempt to use it for her own purposes, but would end up banished back to oblivion by the mace itself. After the events in the Battle Spire, Devaith Fuar would collect this artifact and keep it in his Tower of Telfir. The Niravreen, in Third Era 427, would steal this from Devaith, but would actually not end up giving this one to the Museum of Artifacts. Niravar Yudal. Scourge would not be seen again till Fourth Era 201, where a Dramora General of Mirun's Dagon is in possession of the mace. Using special gauntlets, the Daedra was able to wield the weapon without causing harm to himself. Harm was caused to himself by the last dragonborn, however, as they killed the Dramora in order to stop a plot by the mythic dawn to reopen an oblivion gate in Skyrim and cause a second oblivion crisis. This is the last time Scourge has been seen in Tamriel. Then Stegmer's ring. All that is known of this ring is that it may grant the user protection from certain elements. Even the name Denstegmer is a mystery. Yagram Begarn speaks the truth about this ring regarding its mysterious elements. It has only been seen twice in Tamrielic history. Once in the possession of the Nereverine who allegedly found it in the Phallus ancestral tomb, in a ceremonial ash urn belonging to one D. Bryant. This D. Bryant appears to be in relation to a gentleman who frequented the Elder Scrolls forums before the production of the Elder Scrolls III, and unfortunately passed away before its release. Rest in peace, brother. It is not known what happened to the ring while in the Nerevarine's possession, however, it was later discovered by the last Dragonborn, while fishing and presumably still lies in his pockets. Ebony Mail The Ebony Mail is a breastplate created before recorded history by the dark elven goddess Bothia. It is she who determines who should possess the Ebony Mail and for how long a time. If judged worthy, its power grants the wearer added resistance of fire, magicka, and grants a magical shield. It is Boethia Om who determines when a person is ineligible to bear the ebony mail any longer, and the goddess can be very capricious. There is no direct evidence of when the ebony mail was created, only that it must have been after the events of Warkan's death in the Dawn Era, as his blood is what created the material of ebony. According to Kajiti myths, the male is known as the Death Shroud of Lorkaj, and is used by Kajiti Boathaya in her conflicts with other Daedric princes. 
Although likely appearing many times across Tamrielic history, the first recorded instance of its use is by a Heleth Stormbinder. Although what they use the ebony mail for is unknown, it is known that Boethia took the mail from this individual and hid it somewhere in Black Marsh, where the Eternal Champion uncovers and claims it. The ebony mail is next found in the possession of the agent of the Iliot Bay, who managed to win Boethia's favor and receive the mail as a reward. The ebony mail then, would find itself atop Mount Asarnabibi in Vadenfell, where the Nereverim was tasked with retrieving it by the Tribunal Temple. The peak of the mountain is a place of significance for Boethia, as it is reportedly the location where Molag Baal oversaw Boethia's 99 lovers resulting in the birth of Amalexia. Its retrieval marked the end of Serioni's reign as Archcanon of the Temple, and his replacement with the Nereverim. The ebony mail would subsequently find itself within the collections of the Museum of Artifacts, following the sack of Mournhold by the Argonians and the great war between the Empire and Old Mary Dominion. The ebony mail would find itself in the possession of a group of blades who uncovered it in their journeys. After this, the ebony mail likely exchanged hands an unknown number of times before it was reportedly found in the hands of a bandit chief of Knifepoint Ridge in Skyrim. The last dragonborn, upon communing with Boethia, was tasked with assassinating this bandit as punishment for his laziness and misuse of the mail. Upon completion, the last dragonborn became the last known possessor of the ebony mail. Elagon's Warb. Elagon was a holy knight of legend in Breton history. He was a sought-after man for his courage and determination to set all wrongs right. In one story, it is said that he rescued a baron's daughter from sure death at the hands of an evil warlord. For his reward, the Baron spent all of his riches to have an enchanted shield built for Illidon. The shield granted Eladidon the opportunity to heal his wounds. Eladon's ward is only mentioned a few times throughout recorded history. Its first is from its origin, described previously. Its second is from sometime in the first era, where a figure known as Modrin Hanin was in possession of the shield. Not much is known about the life of the man, other than that he was killed by traitors. Modrin was subsequently buried with Elidon's ward and his traitors were made to guard his tomb for all time. In Third Era 427, the Nerevarin ends up looting the tomb, taking the shield for himself and selling it to the Museum of Artifacts. After the Argonian invasion of Morrowind and Sack of Mournhold, this artifact's whereabouts is currently unknown, although I find it likely to appear sometime in the future. Regarding its Bretonic heritage, and the incoming events that will take place in the Iliac Bay. Fang of Hinect Nemet, Black Marsh was once known to be inhabited with what the Argonians called the Wamasus. Northern men considered them to be intelligent dragons with lightning for blood. One such mighty beast, Hinect Nemet, was slain by the Northern men, though it took seven days and nights, and a score of men. One of the surviving men took a fang home as a trophy. The fang was carved down into a blade and fashioned into a small dagger. The dagger mysteriously houses some of the beast's magical properties and grants the user the ability to do shock damage on an opponent. This unique dagger is seen occasionally by traveling heroes. There are two good historical accounts of this dagger, one in which it was located in the hands of my own brother Dagotherenis where he kept in our citadel, Amia. Unfortunately, it was the Nerevarine's fate to slay my brother and steal this dagger from our house's possession. He subsequently took this to the Museum of Artifacts for safekeeping. The second account comes after the recent sack of Mournhold, in which the dagger finds itself in the hands of some dirty farm tool Argonian named Swims in deep water. To think that this reptile got his hands on an artifact of my house's possession is absolutely insulting. Swims actually gave up the artifact to the last dragonborn in 4th era 201, after they showed mastery in the art of angling. This was the last recorded location of the Fang of Hainik Nemet. Fists of Randagulf. Randagulf of Clan Begalan goes down in Tamrielic history as one of the mightiest warriors from Skyrim. He was known for his courage and ferocity in battle, and was a factor in many battles. He finally met his fate when King Harold conquered Skyrim. King Harold respected this great hero and took Randagoff's gauntlets for his own. After King Harold died, the gauntlets disappeared. The king claimed that the fists granted the bearer added strength. Following Harold's death in First Era 221, the gauntlets disappeared from history. That is, until my kinsman, 
Degolf Garius managed to find it and keep it within our shrine at Ilunibai. Like the previous artifact, the Nerevarine unfortunately broke inside, killing my family and stealing our goodies. That little rascal. Once again, he ended up taking this artifact to the museum, where it disappeared after the Argonian raid. The fists appear again in 4th era 201, on the hands of a fist fighter named Grenwolf the Brawler in Northern Skyrim. Grenwolf would die during a bet with Horik Frostsword, a wielder of the Ice Blade of the Monarch, when the two competed in effort to hunt a web mother spider. Both individuals would perish at the behest of the spider, leaving their respective artifacts for the last Dragonborn to find on their corpses. The last Dragonborn would complete their errand and slay the spider, putting their spirits to rest. They would be the last known holder of the fists of Randagolf, Old Rand. This magical sword is almost a complete mystery. Thieves tell tales about its golden make and how it was actually forged by ancient dragons of the north. Their tales claim that it was given to a great knight who was sworn to protect the dragons. The sword lends its wielder the ability to do fire damage on an enemy. Goldbrand has not been sighted in recent history, and is said to be awaiting a worthy hero. Goldbrand is an artifact of Boethia. It was first given to an ancient Nord warrior named Sivdur, who used it to defend his dragon overlords, likely with help from his fiery katana would build up a strong reputation and his ancestors would later found the Battleborn clan of Skyrim. The artifact fell out of the hands of the Battleborn sometime before 3rd era 427, as it would end up back in the possession of Boethia. That upon discovery of a disheveled shrine of Boethia beneath the waters of the bitter coast, Boethia would task the Nerevarine with erecting a new shrine in her honor. Upon its completion in the same year, Boethia would give the Nerevarine Goldbrand as a reward. He subsequently took the artifact back to the museum, where it didn't last long. Goldbrand next appears back in control of Boethia just six years later in 3rd era 433. Hero of Kach would enter Boethia's realm and partake in the Tournament of Ten Bloods where they achieved victory. Boethia offered Goldbrand to the hero as a reward. This artifact would remain unrecorded for another couple hundred years, until 4th era 175, when it features in a remarkable event in recent history. During the great war between the Thalmor and the Empire, Goldbrand was in the possession of a Thalmor agent at Dremora by the name of Raiv. Raiv was killed by an unnamed soldier who took Goldbrand as his own weapon. Sources differ on what happens next but the most reliable account tells us that this unnamed soldier would take command of the Imperial Army before the Battle of the Red Ring, the most pivotal moment of the Great War. This soldier would lead the charge wielding Goldbrand, dressed as Emperor Titus Me II as the Emperor had recently been seriously injured by assassins. The soldier led the Imperials to a stunning victory, turning the tides of the Great of War from resounding Imperial disaster to something much better although major concessions would still have to be given to the Old Mary at the behest of the Empire. After the end of this battle, Goldbrand would be returned to Sivdur's tomb in Skarim, where it lay for another thirty years until someone could unlock the tomb and avenge the death of Sivdur's brother, who died millennia ago in a property dispute. The last Dragonborn would complete this task and enter Sivdur's tomb, taking Goldbrand as his own. This is the last known appearance of the artifact, Helm of Oren Bearclaw. One of Valenwood's legendary heroes is Oren Bearclaw, son of King Fon Todai. He was a respected clan hunter and a future leader. The Wood Elven legend claims Oren single handedly defeated Glen Huifonva, the witch serpent of the Elven Wood, forever bringing peace to his clan. Oren would go on to accomplish numerous other deeds, eventually losing his life to the Nahaken flu. His helm stood as a monument of his stature for future generations to remember. The helm was lost eventually, as the clan split, and is now a treasured artifact for adventurers. The helm of Oren Bearclaw is rumored to improve the wearer's agility and endurance. This helmet has a disputed history as well. The account of its ownership by Oren Bearclaw is likely not the true story, however, one cannot discount it. The other origin believes the helm to have belonged to an Ort warrior named Karagro. Kar. Karag truthers would argue that the helm belonged to the orc, whose fantastical feats were stolen and attributed to Orin. Karag belonged to the Chattel clan of Orsinium, and therefore the orcs credit it as their historic artifact.
Malakath himself would go on to claim the artifact, much at the behest of the Orin Truthers who claim it as a Bosmer artifact. Regardless of its true origin, the helm could be found in the bloody knoll of the Rothgarian Mountains in High Rock in 2nd era 582. In this year, the artifact would find itself in an international Morag Tom plot. King Kurog of Orsinium hired an adventurer named Algutha Gravarda to retrieve the helm from Bloody Knoll and bring it to Orsinium for display. Algutha, however, was actually a Morag Tong assassin named Mivrina Lothri, a member of the Seven Secretives. This group wanted the artifact for a plot involving seven powerful artifacts that would be used to replace heads of state that would arrest the Seven Secretives. Morag Tong traditionalists would uncover this plot and attempt to intervene, finding Mavrina at Bloody Knoll, killing her and taking the artifact. Rather than return it to the orcs, the Morag Tong chose to give it a descendant of Orin Bearclaw, who returned with it to Velenwood. The helm would go unrecorded for the next several hundred years, appearing again in Third Era 427 in Vardenfell. The Nira Varin would commune with Malakath this year, where he would be given a task to end Orin's bloodline. The supposed last descendant of Orin Bearclaw was an individual named Farvin Orin. The Nerevarin confronted Farvin, who supposedly confessed that the Orin stories were falsehood, and subsequently attacked the Nerevarin so as to keep the secret. Farvin would lose the battle, and Malakath would reward the Nerevarin with the helmet, where he would take it to the Museum of Artifacts. Farvin was not the final descendant of Orin, however, as the helm would be brought from the museum to Cyrodiil where the real last descendant of Orin Bearclaw was second in command of the Cyrodiilic Fighters Guild. This man was Modrin Orin, and he would give up his possession of the helm to the hero of Kach following his ascension to Master of the Fighters Guild. Modrin never disputed the stories of Orin Bearclaw, instead supporting them, and wishing for its new bearer to restore the glory of the Orin name by using it. The helm is then lost to history until the Fourth Era, where it is discovered by accident by a necromancer in Skyrim searching for the artifacts of Manu Marko. These artifacts and the helmet would be discovered in the necromancer's lair in Mara's Ipon by the last Dragonborn. Taking them for himself, this would be the last recorded instance of the use of the helm at this current time. These are not all the artifacts detailed in this book. We still have many more entries to discover and learn about in the coming days. Stay tuned and thank you for your time.